taxes that would have gone to the health sector, taxes that would have gone to infrastructure, taxes that would have gone into agriculture. John Pombe Magufuli is a breath of fresh air. I know that there are some Tanzanians who may think that he's disrupting their agenda. John Pombe Magufuli disrupt their agenda. For if you come into a country and you find a country, a patient suffering from cancer, you've got to subject them to chemotherapy. And when you administer chemotherapy, the hair will fall out a little. There will be some pain. That pain is necessary because there is no gain without pain. I'm not a Jewish prophet nor related to one. I'm not a member of CCM. But if John Pombe Magufuli continues on this trajectory and has a second term, in the next 10 years, Tanzania will be one of the largest economies in this country. God save John Pombe Magufuli. You know, I was reading a tweet and some American is saying, bring us John Pombe Magufuli. And I was in Kenya and I said at one time that we need to magulify Kenya. <laughs> in other words, there is a sense in which a new English word can be found, the magufulification of Africa. <laughs> in fact, I dare say that even my own paper, instead of calling it a call for hygiene in African politics, I would say the magufulification of Africa, and I would still be right. But the whites say that one swallow does not make a summer. There are other good examples in Africa of the beginning of the introduction of political hygiene. Ian Kama in Botswana. Ian Kama in Botswana, it is said that a minister in his government went to him and said, I've been named in a scandal. Your Excellency, help me. He told him there is nothing that I can do. The individual went to his rural home. The following day, it is reported that he had committed suicide. I'm not a sadist, nor do I intend to be one. But if there are such individuals, I want more suicides. 